Hello folks, and welcome back. My name is Chuckles, and we are about to get out of this gosh darn room. I almost swore, but it's the first minute, and YouTube isn't gonna take this video and take my money that I'm not making. Alright. Huh? Did it just unlock? Well, that light was red, and now it's blue. No doubt about it. There's nothing keeping me in here now. Time to go. Okay. Thought it was going to go into a cutscene, but I was wrong. Alright. Ty. Laughing door, get out of my face, you disgust me. Just turned into Jack Kelly for a second there. It's not a good look for me. You found it! Whoa! Ah! Ah! Ow! Ah, my head. Wait. It, is it over? Roll credits. Wow, that was a short game. Phew. That felt too much like being flushed down a toilet. Damn. Well, better than drowning, I guess. Am I in a hallway? Oh. A door! Another door! It's like the trash compactor scene in A New Hope. Radio! Where could he be? Damn this water. Let me go! Y yes, it opened. Ooh, fancy schmancy. What? What the hell? This is the inside of a ship? This is one rich ass ship. Well, yeah, that's what I thought. This is totally a. Wait, what the hell? A wave? Sh shit, I gotta get out of here. Sea deck. Sea deck? B deck? Hurry, hurry. A deck's next. <laughs> Why, hello there. What? People? More people? A lot of people. Um... Shit. I've never talked to a real human before. I guess there's another one of us now. Huh? A, a dancer? No, I'm not. You better get moving. Well, okay then. S silver hair? Yeah. Hmm. What of us, huh? What? What? Oh, nothing. Don't even. Don't even touch Sif, but just shut up. Going up won't do you any good. There are two doors, but neither of them will open. Uh, hold on. The doors won't open? Come on! Aren't you coming? You gotta come! Quick! You gotta, gotta come, come fast! fast. <laughs> That's nine of us, then. All of the cards are in hand. Wait! They're gone. Just what is going on here? There's an old man like a lion, a girl with pink hair, and a prince, and I have no idea what they're talking about. Mm. Um... Mm. Uh. Huh? What was that all about? Hey, what the hell are you just standing there for? Didn't you hear him? Huh? The doors on A deck are no good. We gotta check the doors on B deck. Look at the fucking tomato or apple on my hat. Isn't that cute as hell? Got it? Now go! Whoa. Hey, man, that was dangerous. Huh? Four? And this one says... Ha! Those fucking... Ties. They're the same. The room I woke up in had a number on the door, just like that. You too, eh? My cell was the same. A number upon the door. 
If I opened it, ran down the hallway outside, and found myself in the rather grand room full of stairs, as I suspect did the rest of you. M me too. Same for me. There was a door with a number on it. Yes, we all saw the same thing. That's not important. We need to hurry. You think I don't know that lady? Uh, uh, open, damn it. Fucking contraption. What is this shit? Fuck, it's not opening. This damn thing won't even budge. Out of my way. Rah! <laughs> a body slam from a guy that big didn't even budget. There must be some other way to save money. This looks just like the device next to the door in that room earlier. Except, not at all like it. It's got a crosshair and letters instead of asterisks. So that means this door is probably locked too. But still. Gah! Damn it! Are there any other doors? He had scarcely taken a step when, at the top of the stairs, next to an ornate clock embedded in the wall, he saw a person. It was a girl. She looked to be the same age as Junpei. He froze, unable to look away from her face. He wasn't confounded by her beauty, or something equally silly. No, there was another reason he couldn't take his eyes off the girl. Junpei had seen her somewhere before. He couldn't quite remember where, but he knew. He knew he'd met her before. The girl, too, stared at Junpei, similarly stunned. Her response suggested she'd seen him before as well. Huh? Huh? Without saying a word, Junpei walked slowly toward her. She didn't move. It was almost as though she was held in place by some sort of magic spell. As Junpei stepped onto her landing, the spell broke. No sooner had he set his foot down than the whole ship shook a second time. He had some big-ass motherfucking feet. Ah! The quake caught the girl unprepared and she fell. Watch out! Moving on instinct, Junpei leapt to catch her. Or so he thought. Oh! Her face was far closer than it should have been, mere inches from his own. Oh! He was flat on his back, and she had landed squarely on his cock. The girl seemed as confused as he did, and her face suggested she still hadn't fully recovered from seeing him. For a moment that seemed to stretch for a very long time, they stared at one another. The ship stopped shaking. Everything was quiet. Water could be heard from the bottom of the ship, lapping faintly at walls and ceilings, but eventually that faded as well. The silence was complete, a thick, muffling blanket. At last, the girl opened her mouth. Oh my gosh! Is that you, Jumpy? Jumpy? What the fuck kind of a name is Jumpy? Her words echoed through Junpei's head, and suddenly, his memory returned. Ah, uh, Akane? Why hadn't he realized it before? The girl was Akane Kurashiki. She and Junpei had been friends in childhood. They'd gone to elementary school together for six years. But what was she doing on the ship? Her soft eyes were only inches away from his own. He could feel the warmth of her face. Feelings he'd thought long forgotten began to work their way to the surface. Ah! He could feel his face heating up. At that moment...
welcome aboard. I welcome you all, from the bottom of my heart, to this, my vessel. What? What's that voice? I am Zero, the captain of this ship. I am also the person who invited you here. This is... That guy in the gas mask! Hey, asshole, what the hell is this? Come on out here. I want to get a look at you. You fucking pipsqueak. What do you mean to do to us? I mean to have you participate in a game. Some of you, I know, are familiar with this game. The Nonary Game. It is a game where you will put your life on the line. Nonary Game? What the hell's that? The rules of the Nonary Game can be found upon your persons. They are simple rules. Read them. What is he talking about? Hey, there's something in my asshole. Check this out. Come on, reach inside. Just, just use your pinky. Just go out. You can get it. Just, just, uh, there it is. You got it. Good work there, kiddo. Hey, I got one too. Then it would seem Zero has seen fit to grace us each with a letter. Would you mind terribly reading it to us, young man? On this ship, you will find a handful of doors emblazoned with numbers. We will call them the Numbered Doors. How quaint. The doors in front of you are a pair of the same. The key to opening these numbered doors are the numbered bracelets that each of you possess. Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets, and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Only those who have opened the door may pass through. There are, however, limits. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute. Look at my sick, fucking, ripped-ass forearm. So this thing on my arm is a... bracelet. The purpose of the game is simple. Leave this ship alive. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. There is one last thing I must tell you. As you have no doubt surmised, the ship has begun to sink. On April 14th, 1912, the famous ocean liner Titanic crashed into an iceberg. After remaining afloat for two hours and forty minutes, it sank beneath the waters of the North Atlantic. I will give you more time. I will give you more time. Nine hours. That is the time you will be given to make your escape. And we'll find out more in the next episode. Thanks for watching, folks. I have been Chuckles. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Gee, baby, I'm so professional, I lose my shit.